What's up game developers, Couch Ferret here, and welcome back to Shooting Animation Part 2. Today we'll continue with our archer by finishing his top part animator controller to make him move and aim in different directions at the same time. We'll create a 2D free from directional blend tree for the movement and a 2D simple directional for the aiming. If it sounds fun, then stay with me and consider subscribing so you won't miss any future videos of this game. Cool! Let's begin! The first step is to create a new game object and an animator controller for our top part animations. We can easily achieve this by dragging and dropping the first six slices of the top part's sprite sheet into the scene. Unity will prompt us with a dialog to save our animations. Let's save it to the animation slash split directory as top run left. The act of saving it causes Unity to create several things for us. It creates the top run left animation, an animator controller for the animation, a new game object with an animator component in it, which refers to the new animator controller. Let's remove the suffixes from the animator controller's name and from the new game object's name. To have the top part game object move together with the archer, we need to drag it into the archer game object, so it becomes one of its child objects. And don't forget to set its relative position to the archer to zero. Okay. It's time to create all those new top part animations. First, we have to select the top part game object and go to the animator and animation windows. We need to make the 5 remaining running animations and the 6 walking animations. We can create them by hitting create new clip in the animation window and dragging the slices into the timeline. We also need to set the sample rate to 12. It's done. We will create the aiming animations later this episode, but let's have a functional running and walking character first. It's time to work on the top parts animator. Let's copy the run state with the blend tree in it from the bottom parts animator. Now double click it to change the animations from the bottom ones to the top ones. Ok, let's go back to the base layer and delete all the simple animations. We need to create an idle animation by using the third slice in the sprite sheet. Let's rename the state to idle and set it as layer default. When we copied the blend tree state, it copied two animation parameters as well, but we need to create the third one, which is the magnitude. To make the animator work, we need to create transitions between idle and run in both directions. Let's start with the transition from idle to run by creating it. We have to select it and uncheck has exit time and fixed duration, and also set transition duration to zero. The transition's condition should be magnitude greater than zero. To transition back from the run state, let's create a transition, set the same settings as before, and create a condition where magnitude is less than 0 0.001. If we tested it now, no animation would play because we haven't set the animation parameters value in our player controller script. To solve it, first we need to select the top part game objects animator for the player controller's top animator variable to access it from code. Let's open up the C-sharp script and copy and paste the part where we set the bottom animator's parameters and let's replace the bottom animator with top animator. If we hit play, then we can see that we have a working running and walking animation like the one we had two episodes before, but now it's two separate animations, so we can easily extend it with our aiming animations. Before we start working on the aim animation, let's rename our existing animation parameters in our top part animator to distinguish them from the new ones. Prefix all three of them with move, and also we have to do this in the script as well. Okay. We need a bool animation parameter to know when the fire button is pressed, and we need three float parameters for the aiming direction, just like the ones we have for movement. So they should be aim horizontal, aim vertical, and aim magnitude. It's time to create those animations. We need to create the new animation clips, just like the running ones, but this time we use the slices which contain the aiming animations. Let's use only the first three slices and leave out the last one. We will use the last ones for different animations in the next episode, where we polish our shooting with them to have the archer release the arrow. Let's drag each of the directions slices and set the stamp rate to 12. Now we have 8 aiming directions. Let's use them in a new blend tree. We need to copy the run state to have a new aim state with a blend tree in it. 
Let's go inside it by double-clicking it and click the blend tree to see its parameters. We need to delete the walking motion fields because we only need the outer ones. We have to change the blend type to 2D simple directional. Let's change the run animations to aim in all motion fields and also add two new fields for the top aim up and down animations. Their X coordinates should be zeros and the Y's should be 1 and minus 1. To get a perfect octagon out of our motion fields, we need to change all not whole numbers in their coordinates to 0.7071 or minus 0.7071. Nice! We can test it out if we press play at the bottom of the inspector. And don't forget to change the animation parameters used by the blend tree to the aim parameters. Let's go back to the base layer and make those transitions. We need one from any state to aim. We are using any state so our archer can start aiming from both the idle and run states. We need to uncheck fixed duration, set transition duration to zero, and uncheck can transition to self so it won't start the aiming animation over and over. Let's scroll down to the conditions and add one with aim equals to true and another one with aim magnitude greater than zero. To stop aiming, let's create a transition from aim to exit. Exit will forward us to entry, so the whole animation will start over, meaning that the idle animation will be played. Change the parameters as usual and create a condition with aim equals to false. Before we can test it, we need to set the animation parameters in the script, so let's open it up. Just copy the lines where we set the move parameters and change it to set the aim parameters. Let's copy the aim vector as well, we will fix the code duplicates later. Change the movement vector to the aim vector. The last parameter is the aim bool parameter. We can set its value to the get button fire function call, which checks if the fire button is pressed or not. Let's test it so we can see if we've left out something or not. Ok, it's not bad, but two things I can see that needs a little tweak. The first is that our aiming animations loop instead of stopping at the last frame. We can fix this one easily by unchecking loop time on all aim animations. Now it stops. However, the arrows should be shot when we release the fire button and not when we press it. Let's jump back into the code editor and scroll down to change get button down to get button up so it will only fire arrows when we release the button. Perfect! A little archer pulls the arrow and he can release it to shoot it. And the best thing is that we can move wherever we want while aiming and shooting. How cool is this? That's it for today folks. Next time we will polish the shooting animation with release animations. We will learn about state machine behaviors to give extra logic to our animator controllers. So be sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what you have just seen, feel free to ask and I try to answer all of them. See you next time!